So we continue our topics on uh, which are related to surface tension and here is one more concept is the shape of a liquid meniscus uh, which again has a relationship with uh, surface tension and cohesive and adhesive forces. So let us say we have a test tube in which we pour water. We know that the shape that the meniscus takes is something like this. The top surface takes its shape like this and we know this is known as meniscus and this is water the meniscus shape is like this and we call this a concave meniscus because when we look at it from this particular direction it appears concave whereas if in the same glass test tube if we pour mercury the meniscus shape is a convex meniscus we get a meniscus like this in case of mercury and uh, one of the reasons or one of the things that we'll be discussing in this video is why does this happen so let us try to understand why this happens. The primary reason is because of what we know as cohesive forces and adhesive forces. Now, just to remind you, cohesive forces are the forces between mole same molecules. For example, if we take this, the force, the intermolecular forces between water molecules would be cohesive forces. Adhesive forces are between forces which come into different molecules or molecules of different substances which are of course in contact with each other. So in this case water is in contact with glass. So the force, the, in, the intermolecular forces between molecules of water and molecules of glass where they come in contact would be known as adhesive forces. Same with mercury. The force between molecules of mercury, cohesive forces, the force between molecules of mercury and glass, adhesive forces. Let us begin with uh, the case of water. So if I show the meniscus and I magnify the diagram, let's, let's first initially assume that the meniscus is a straight line, which actually it is not, but let us assume that. Now here two forces are coming into play, cohesive forces and adhesive forces. Okay, let's focus our attention on the molecule which is in contact with glass over here, the one on the extreme left. So this particular molecule experiences both these forces, cohesive forces and adhesive forces. So if I show the cohesive forces, and it, let, me, let me begin with adhesive force. The adhesive force will be something like this. It will be acting in this particular direction. Because the molecule is in direct contact with water over here. So it acts in this direction. The force of attraction between glass molecule and the water over here. So this is the adhesive force. Let us say we call it P. As far as the cohesive forces, the cohesive forces between the molecule, which is over here, and the molecules of water. And because the molecules are over here in this direction, then the general direction of the cohesive force would be something like this. And another thing which is observed is that this adhesive force is larger than the cohesive force. Therefore, I have shown this with a smaller vector diagram, vector, whereas this is slightly longer. So, let us call this Q. And if I take the resultant, the resultant force acting on this particular molecule, I will get something like this. So you can see it acts in this direction. So the force, the, re, the, the resultant force of these two forces is acting in this particular direction. If I take, if I go, I start going inside, if I take a molecule over here, now as far as this molecule is concerned, these two forces will change. The one change that will happen is the force P, the adhesive force will decrease because this molecule now moves away from the glass surface. So this particular force will decrease in terms of its magnitude and this particular force, the, the cohesive force, will become more and more perpendicular. For example, in, for the central the molecule here in the center, the, the, the cohesive force would be vertically downwards, whereas in this case it would be, you know, it would try, to, this is at an angle, so it would try to become more and more vertical, something in this direction. And when it, for, for the molecule in the center, it will act vertically downwards. And as we go inside, this force will keep on decreasing. In the center, this force becomes zero. So the resultant is acting downwards. For this molecule, it will act like this. And therefore, what is happening is, if on this particular surface of water, the forces are acting like this. Now, these are forces which are trying to pull it down. But we know that this surface is in equilibrium. So what happens is, the molecules arrange themselves perpendicular to these forces so that the surface remains in equilibrium. Let me say this again. 
we had assumed a horizontal surface the resultant of these two forces are acting in this direction in this direction as you can see over here and this particular surface therefore assumes a shape like this the molecules assume a shape like this so the molecule over here is perpendicular to this force in the same line the molecule over here is perpendicular the molecule over here is perpendicular to this force the molecule over here is perpendicular so on and so forth and therefore this particular shape is observed and that is why we get a concave meniscus in case of water. In case of mercury, the exact reverse happens. Meaning that if I again show the same diagram and if I again show this horizontal surface of mercury and I take one particular molecule on the extreme line, in this case, P is smaller in terms of magnitude. So you will get a smaller value of P and relatively speaking as compared to this, this particular force is larger and therefore if I take the resultant of these forces you can see it will point inwards it will point inside the liquid whereas here it was pointing outside the liquid and therefore if I draw this surface again the forces will be acting like this and since it is being pulled in this direction the what happens is the surface molecules rearrange themselves such that they are perpendicular to these forces so we get a shape like this so they rearrange themselves in such a way that equilibrium is maintained and they take this particular shape. So this is the reason uh, why meniscus are formed. Right. I'll talk about uh, two more concepts in this uh, uh, video, uh, short concepts which will which are connected over here. So if I if I draw this diagram again, right. now I focus on only the left part. Let us say this is the glass surface, and let us say this is the meniscus of water. I've just shown this part over here, and this is the glass. The angle between the solid surface, in this case the solid is the glass. So the angle between the solid, that means the tangent to the solid surface and the tangent to the liquid surface. This particular angle theta is known as angle of contact. And in this case, this is the case of water, this is the case of mercury. In this case the angle theta is less than 90 degree, it is acute. Whereas in this case, again I will show the same diagram, let us say this is the glass tube and this is how the meniscus looks like. So again I will do the same, the angle between the solid surface, so angle between the solid surface and the tangent to the liquid surface. So this tangent to the solid, tangent to the liquid, this particular angle is theta is greater than 90 degree. So angle of contact is greater than 90 degree in obtuse. So this is what happens, so that when we have a con meniscus and this is convex meniscus when we have concave meniscus the angle of contact is less than 90 degree when we have a convex meniscus the angle of contact is greater than 90 degree and there is one more aspect attached to this in this case when we have this situation concave and less than 90 degree the liquid in this case water it wets the solid whereas in this case it does not wet all of us know that if I pour water on a glass plate, it will wet the glass plate. But if I pour mercury onto a glass plate, it will not. So, this is uh, the, the concept of angle of contact associated with surface tension and the cohesive and adhesive forces. Alright, the final short point I want to discuss in this video is the surface tension and again related to the concave and the convex meniscus. So, if I take the, let me change the color over here because I am talking of something which is slightly different from this. Of course connected and associated with this concept but slightly different. So let us uh, show the concave meniscus. So this is the, let us say the concave meniscus and let us say this is the glass plate over here. Now if you look at the molecules on the surface, let us, let us say we take this particular molecule. Now, we know that surface tension is acting on the surface. That means this particular molecule is experiencing a force in this direction as well as this direction, tangent at this particular point. Because the surface acts like a stretched membrane. Therefore, there is a force acting in this direction and this direction. So, if I draw this diagram again over here and show this as one force and this as the other force. Now, I can break these forces into their components. So, the component of this force will be one in this direction, the other in this direction. And for this particular force, the components will be this and this. 
As you can see, these two forces will cancel out each other. Even though in this diagram they don't appear or look equal, but because of symmetry, these two forces they are acting in opposite direction. They will cancel out each other. But these two forces they are acting in the forward direction. So what happens or what is observed is that when we have a concave meniscus, the force, the net force of surface tension acts in the forward direction. In this particular direction. The reverse happen in case of concave meniscus. If I take a molecule, there is a force acting in this direction, there is a force acting in this direction. So if I take the molecule again, there is a force acting like this, there is a force acting like this. I can take the two components of this force. For this force, these will be the two components. These two will cancel out. There is a net force acting in the downward direction. So what it means is that when we have a concave meniscus, the net force of surface tension is acting in upward direction. In this case, it is acting in the downward direction. If that is the case, if there is a net force acting in the upward direction and a net force acting in downward direction, this meniscus should either go up. In this case, it should go up. In this case, it should come down. But we don't see that happening. We don't see that happening. We see that the meniscus is in its position. It is neither going up, neither going down. What does that mean? That means there is some other force which is coming into play, which is overcoming these forces. So what is that force? That force is because of the pressure difference on this side and this side. So in this case, the pressure, the, the force is acting on this side. Let us say the pressure on this side is P1 and on this P2. In this case, the pressure P1 is greater than P2. So pressure P1 minus P2 acts in the downward direction, acts in the downward direction, overcomes this force. The pressure into this particular area will overcome this force and ensure that the meniscus is in equilibrium. In this case, the force is acting in the downward direction. So P1 and P2 and P1 minus P2 in this case will act in the upward direction and overcome this force. In summary, what this means is that when we have a meniscus or when we have a curved shape of a liquid, there is excess pressure on the concave side. Can you see your P1 is greater than P2 because the force is acting in this direction. So the, there's more pressure on this side and this is the concave side. So there's more pressure on the concave side. Similarly, over here on the concave, this is the convex side. This is the concave side, there's more pressure. So we summarize this by saying that the, there's excess pressure on the concave side, which is equal to P1 minus P2. And in a subsequent video, very soon, we will be looking at this excess pressure. If we call that pressure as delta P, the excess pressure acting on the concave side, it is given by 2T by R, where T is the force of surface tension that we talked about and R is the radius of curvature. For example, if this is the curvature of the meniscus over here, this is considered a part of a circle and the radius of this particular circle R. So this R will be this particular R. So we can find out the excess pressure if you know this force of surface tension and if you know the radius of curvature and we can find out the net force acting on the meniscus. Okay, this is all about the uh, meniscus of liquids in glass tubes and their association with cohesive forces, adhesive forces and surface tension and angle of contact. Thank you.